Well, I think I found everything. So let's start figuring out where this trigger guard should go. Or how deep, first of all, the wood needs to be. Now the first thing you might think of, well, let's get the high spot and measure back here. That's not really such a good idea because you would have troubles trying to find a reference. And I suppose if you were very careful, you, you probably could do it. But there's an easier way. What I do, since I have both of these scope mounts, is use them. Now I use the back of this front one. The front of this trigger guard kind of ends in between. So what I'm first going to do is measure this way. And just to make sure I'm square to everything. Alright, the first number is 1.2.62. So I'll write that down. That'll be about here. 2.62. And somewhere here in the back. I think I can use yep, the back of the rear scope mount. And that's uh, 2.75. All right. Oh, and I stuck this shim and all that so that um, it was the scope mounts were sitting square to the wood. Right now. Alrighty. So you put this in, and of course this would go a whole lot better if I had brought something as simple as a pencil. Well, make do with this. Alrighty, now I know this wood is square, so what I can do is line up this with the edge of my scope mount. One line and repeat that. And all I'm doing is looking at the edge. I know some once uh, if something's really long and you want to look flat down the side, just stare at it. And as this comes slowly, all of a sudden this edge and this edge will go together. That means you're looking straight down the side. Which is what I'm doing here. And that one's all right. Now wait up. Okay, this is the first one, two seventy five. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little bit of material. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and round it out to three. And when I'm, this is, of course, what I use to measure with. Line up. Well, let's see. Let me do the. Hmm. All right, I'll do this the other way. Okay, what I'm doing is coming along. Whew. Well, that'll certainly wake you up.
and what I was doing is moving this back until I need to see if I can tilt this enough for the camera so that I see this. So now if I can Again, if I had three hands, this would might go a little easier. Okay, that's about three inches. And I said this was 2.62, so I do the same thing here. And I'll add a quarter of an inch and let's say two dots and I now have an idea where the real bottom is. Okay, now I actually know this is going to be a quarter of an inch higher. Okay. And uh, Let's make some more marks. I need to locate the pins, at least the screw holes. I could say stay and it would behave, but I bet you it won't cooperate. Okay. Center line of this hole. Is about there. Center line of this hole. And we'll get a whole lot more accurate in a moment, but I'm just using this temporary for layout. And we're going to saw the area for the trigger guard. here and yeah, same thing on this one actually This is the way this is going to sit. And is it, yep, holes more or less line up. So, the front of this is about here. And the back is about here. So now I have an idea. Then just to double check, I 
if I pick this up a quarter of an inch, I think well, it'd be something like that. So we've still got plenty of room. Now where do I want to saw this? Well, this part I know uh, I don't need this much thickness anymore so I can pretty much follow this. And since it's always easier to remove wood than put more on and in a bandsaw it's easier to cut a straight line than a bunch of curves I'll make you just keep this straight. Okay. Then here in the back, I said this is the back part here. And I have to be careful because that's going in very close to the beginning of curve of my pistol. So we're actually going to I'm only going to go this far. It's just barely enough clearance. And get rid of the other lines so I don't get too confused. Remember the works as an eraser. And I don't want to follow this line. So, what I need to do is pretty much try to follow this. Cut it off there. And let's go see what I can do with that. I'll be back in a moment with this cut off. Well, uh, here is a slice. And this is something you can practice your finishes on. Uh, if you want to try that slice thing thing in case your metal shrank. Well, here's a good thing to start off with. Okay, here are my two pins since I had the barrel through, and one trigger guard. And of course, I was a bit too careful when cutting this out. So let me go back and uh, chisel a little bit. Now this is a bit rough. Uh, unfortunately, I got I bought a carbide bit, and it's from uh, Timberwolf. Sat on my shells, I guess about a year, and it had as a bad weld. So when I called them up, they said uh, they're not going to uh, honor the warranty because uh, I'd sat on my shelf for so long, and I was supposed to check it. So they got out of it and um, so I let everybody know and of course and I won't be buying anything from Timberwolf so now uh, let me go back and I need to hollow this out a little bit so I can start with the trigger guard back in a moment now to locate all this this is just a piece of quarter inch drill rod and uh, I don't want to cut a piece off just for uh, 10 minutes worth of work I'm just leaving it the original length and this is the uh, screw that does belong in here and I'm just putting it into the hole okay so now I have an arrangement I know what the inside of this is going to look like so now
And please note I'm drawing this on the inside, not the outside. Yes. The idea being when I start drilling, and I'm not going to do this the hard way with chisels, I'll go to my drill press and try to drill that out. I'm going to be using the inside here as guides. That way I'm still giving myself just a little bit of material in addition to the clearance from this hole when I draw this out just to give myself a little extra margin. And you'll probably hear that fall over not too far down the road now. I guess I should go put it back where it belongs. Alrighty, here we are. Now I'm going to drill press and uh, drill most of that out. Now, in the future, when I put this back on, of course I need these walls square to the receiver. So what I'll do is use this on the inside, push it through my mag well, and I'll use that to uh, make sure this is square. Now I drilled out the magazine well and this is a half inch or well actually it says 7 16 um, so if I use a smaller one I just drill more holes uh, use a bigger one you don't drill quite as many holes uh, but anyway, we got this in, and now I'm going to start cutting this back so that um, the magazine well will fit. One of the things, this should have been made, according to whichever aftermarket or factory you get, should be thinner than here. So that when you put it down, it's only going to go part way. Uh, this one doesn't have much of a slant, but it's there. It, it's a, well, it's rather on the small side, but it'll work. Okay, let me see if I can hollow this out and see what to do next. Alrighty, so I've got this, just the, the rough parts, taken out. So now I put the barrel back in, and we're going to use some references. If you remember, we had some black lines formed this as we were inlating all this in. Well, it's a little sketchy. So you put this back in. Copy around it as best as you can. Then take a straight chisel. And you want to put this with the bevel down here on the inside. You're still going to be on the inside a little bit, but a couple of light taps, and all we're doing is marking a reference. The pencil won't bend enough to get in there, or pen. So now you get an idea of where this well will come up on the inside. Again, this might be a little bit to the inside of where it will actually be, but I'm trying to be cautious. 
and at the moment that's a good thing to do because once again it's a little hard to cut wood back on but you can always cut more off okay that's what I want to take out Yes, the magazine is a little tighter than that is, but we'll trim it up in a minute. This is just so I can remove some wood and I'm not worried about it splitting and tearing out where I don't want it to, because that really would be bad news. And we're doing this for the same reason we did it on the barrel channel. We want to make sure we got clean lines and we don't end up with tear out where we don't want it. And yes, this will probably disappear under the epoxy, but let's see how close we can get it and uh, see how little epoxy you need to correct things. I think it's time to go sharpen a few chisels. Alrighty, now that I've established this, I'm going to chop out a bit more and then see about going at it from the other end. It's time to get covered in black again. Get your black stuff, brush, and now what we're going to do is start working on getting the trigger guard down. Now one of the things I noticed as I was going along, this screw I originally was using 
just wasn't long enough. So what I did is just pulled the pin out of, out of the metal I was using earlier. And putting it in there. This actually gave me a little bit longer. This will follow the bolt hole I put in there earlier. And what we want to do is more or less push all this down evenly. Now you've already made a hole down there. And we want the sides here to more or less be parallel with what you've already put in. We know that's perpendicular to the receiver. Now in the beginning, yeah, things are going to wobble a little bit, but eventually they'll settle down. And now what we want to do is pretty much go straight down. Now if you'll notice, there's a small gap here. Well, remember, this is at a different angle than well, let's see. What's the best way to explain this? Let me take this off. That might not have been the best start to explaining things. Yes, I know this is outside the picture, but just a moment. Okay, here's what we're trying to do. Okay, as you can see, this is at an angle, and that's what this eventually will have to be. So, we'll slowly work our way down. And these are nice and snug, so it's pretty much going to be lined up as I push it straight down. And it's nice and solid. Now be careful, in the beginning, yes you can have a little bevel. You can have a little, little bevel out here. But remember, we only have a quarter of an inch of extra material. And this, the profile, there's no extra flare or flange on the outside. So you have to be a bit careful. So now I go around and very carefully just remove the black. If I could find my straight chisel. And yes, I can keep that out there and uh, Hopefully it won't knock it off the edge here too soon. Okay, you'll see a very small black line 
I want this to be very snug. As I'm going down and I notice it's still rubbing, then I can take a little bit off the sides. But I do want this really snug, snug and tight. And yes, I probably will be pulling the other pin off the other side and not worrying about that big long thing that's going to poke me in the eye one of these days if I'm not careful. And you can see this is slowly, it's moving up till eventually we'll know what size the magazine opening will be. Well, I'm going to go a little bit further, switch this out for the other um, stock screw so I don't stick myself in the eye, and well, see you in a little while. Well, I've had a, a kind of an odd thing occur. The left this for a couple of days and when I tried to pull the trigger guard off it had a great deal of troubles trying to come off the pins. Um, when I tried to put them on they, nothing would line up so I started doing a little investigation and found out this front of this barrel that had originally pushed down has now gone in the opposite direction and gone up at nearly an eighth of an inch. Well for this to happen once that's very unusual. I don't recall seeing this happen twice. Uh, yes, after the initial big move, oh, it'll be a little bit here or there, um, but two big ones, that was a big surprise. So, um, what else can I do? Going back, sinking the barrel back down where it belongs, and you can see I've gotten it back to about here, and I need to push it down a little more so that the black lines and comes all the way back here. I guess, uh, well as they say, Mother Nature, she's uh, has a mind of her own. So I'll be back in a moment after I'm done putting this back to where it belongs. Oh, and yes, as I'm going along, I am planing this down just a little bit uh, so I don't end up with these really high walls. Now we've gotten the trigger guard assembly pretty much down. I have oh maybe a eighth of an inch to go before the magazine box actually makes contact with the receiver. And this is a good way to make sure you're keeping this end and this end more or less going down straight is just to keep measuring on the inside and see how much wood is left. Um, I've also been working as we did on the other side. I go around and keep the wood trimmed away. Then uh, when it gets down a little ways, take the plane, clean it up so I don't have this big dish in the middle. It can be a little difficult sometimes. Um, I don't know where my other mallet went, but of course I have another one. Getting in here is oh, kind of difficult, especially since I, well, I'm not quite sure what happened to the bottom of it. So take something that's soft. Uh, remember this is aluminum, so you can tap and work it down that way. To get it out, yes, you'll have to drop the barrel so you can get the tension off of uh, these posts and then tap this out. Uh, I guess um, I'll finish this up and we're just about done and the next stage we'll be putting in the hole here for the trigger groove. Uh, we'll see how that goes in just a moment. Now 
now where I'm at the point where it's a good idea to start thinking about the stock screws. Going from this, these, now to something we can turn from this side. Um, because of the way this was shaped, of course you don't have room. So take a pen, stick it in just a little ways, draw a pen, and slowly work your way down. I've got, oh, just a little ways to go. Um, some more to trim off, and then I'll be able to start using these. I've got just a very tiny amount of wood to go, so might as well do it. And uh, next uh, stop, well, we'll see how this trigger guard should pretty much be down. Till next time. Well, finally, we're down to one really big step. I now have the trigger guard so that it's within a couple of pieces of paper of touching the bottom of the barrel, uh, front and back. I want to stop at this point. I know as I'm going along I'm going to have a good chance of damaging the edges. So this will give me a small amount of oh, a, a little bit of leeway that I can go ahead and damage the edges here as I'm shaping the outside. Then when things are, I'm down to the final last little bit of shaping, then I'll finish taking this down so it's metal on metal, uh, shape the outside, uh, at least here on the bottom. Then I'll go ahead and make my pillar blocks uh, and uh, do all the epoxying of all these parts. So the um, next step, I guess, is to take this apart. Oh, and one thing I wanted to point out, the outside edge of this trigger box, it probably doesn't show up on the camera, but it has a slight bevel. It goes halfway across, well, not even half, maybe a third or a quarter of the way across the metal. And this bevel, it's very small, is on the outside. So it gives you this rather exaggerated line on the outside. Um, it's a little disconcerting see, thinking that there's that much gap between wood and metal, but there isn't. And when it comes to the very end, I will shape the outside of this wood and I'll use part of that bevel so I have a very smooth surface or transition from the wood to the metal. But that'll be a long ways down the road. Now one of the cautions is back here. Let me take this apart for just a moment. to do is to transition from the back of the trigger guard into this curve. Now here you want to be a little bit careful because on this stock, and granted this is for a Seiko, this is not a Remington, but you'll, it's just a little stronger definition. Here's the back of the trigger guard and it almost immediately starts into this curve. Well this one of course is a little different, but not a huge amount. So I'm not quite sure where this is going to end up being. So I'm going to leave a tad bit of wood right in this region behind the trigger guard to give me the room later on so I can make whatever shape I want. Now if you have a big hand, of course this is going to be set back. If you have a smaller hand, uh, this will be a little further forward. So if it is going to be a little further forward, you definitely want to leave a little bit down here. Alrighty, well let me see about uh, getting things set up and we'll figure out now we're going to start removing a lot of the wood and laying out where the rest of this stock goes. Oh, but before that, I sh should put my trigger in. I guess they kind of come in handy occasionally. So uh, let me flip this over and uh, we'll see about where the trigger goes. See you in a little bit.